Good morning, Washington. Wanted to give a uh, update on the 1639 uh, legal challenge up in federal court in uh, in Tacoma. And uh, since the original filing, there's been a lot of very very boring things happening. Even the lawyers say this is the most boring part of the case. Uh, lots of motions to extend, motions to dismiss, uh, parties asking to be removed from the suit, parties asking to be added to the uh, to the lawsuit. And uh, so uh, the latest rendition or uh, uh, order that came down yesterday out of uh, Judge Layton's uh, chambers was in response to uh, uh, Sheriff Atkins and uh, Police Chief Midell's uh, motion to dismiss uh, uh, and be removed from the lawsuit. And, uh, and the judge issued an order that was a, a, a fantastic ruling, uh, a, a very strongly worded, a very well thought out and well reasoned, uh, non-biased uh, uh, order. And uh, uh, they had asked to be removed from the suit as they were not the appropriate parties, they weren't responsible for law enforcement, the Department of Licensing was really it, we should be suing the state, uh, so on and so forth. And, and, and we've been down this road already, and, and as it turns out, and, and as the, uh, the ruling actually indicates, the Attorney General doesn't have prosecutorial discretion or power uh, on 1639. So as much as he says he was going to enforce it, uh, the enforcement really comes down to local law enforcement and uh, the Department of Licensing to revoke dealers' licenses if they're found to be in noncompliance uh, with the statutory requirements of 1639. So uh, I, the ruling was a, was a fantastic, uh, basically uh, boiled it down and said uh, that the suit would not be dismissed, it would carry on forward, that uh, uh, these parties were the appropriate parties to be suing because they in fact had enforcement power, that we were uh, going to be harmed by it, although we haven't been uh, charged with a misdemeanor or a felony for violating 1639. Um, the, uh, uh, there is a compelling reason to believe that we would be. There is a concrete plan uh, per the uh, order that, uh, that we could be prosecuted uh, if we violated uh, any of those conditions of 1639. So uh, the judge in the ruling said they're going to remain a part of the lawsuit, uh, which means the lawsuit is moving forward. Uh, he also clearly indicated that because we're moving forward and uh, this motion to dismiss is, uh, is overridden, um, that all forms of relief uh, to the citizens of Washington, uh, uh, to the juvenile plaintiffs, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the dealers in the state of Washington uh, is still on the table. So the, uh, the injunction that we asked for uh, is still, uh, uh, still out there. Uh, we are hoping to see that applied uh, here in the next few weeks so that uh, uh, the uh, July 1st implementation date of the majority of the rules uh, will be postponed until we get either a summary judgment out of the judges' chambers or it goes to oral arguments and, uh, and is held uh, and is adjudicated in, the, in that process. So uh, hoping that uh, that injunction happens real soon or we just get a flat out summary judgment that says yes, we're right. And, and the wording of, of this particular uh, order yesterday was a, a very strongly worded of, of the plaintiffs have very good standing uh, on, uh, on the arguments that they've presented in the, in the, in the pleadings so far. So it's a, a very positive statement uh, from, uh, from this judge. Uh, judge Layton uh, is, uh, is one of the better judges we could ask for, uh, not a terribly political uh, judge. Uh, he's uh, uh, more a, a letter of the law uh, by the book and uh, so that's really what we need. We, we don't want to get into the political court system that is the state of Washington's uh, Supreme Court that kind of thing. So lots of good news coming there. Uh, if we don't get the injunction that we've asked for in the uh, original suit there are other things uh, underway to, uh, to seek emergency relief. Uh, from 1639 because of the lack of uh, uh, readiness from the state or from uh, the law enforcement agencies. We are about five weeks away from implementation of 1639 uh, as well as the end of Nick's uh, courtesy checks 
for handguns, uh, receivers, frames, all of that stuff. And if you haven't uh, heard about that, that means that uh, if you come in to purchase a firearm with your concealed weapons permit, uh, you will not be able to leave with it the same day. We will have to send ev almost every uh, purchase uh, to the local law enforcement for approval. And uh, local law enforcement already takes between six and 10 business days to return uh, approvals or denials to us. Uh, this effectively is going to increase their workload by a factor of three to four. And uh, agencies haven't been funded for that. Uh, the Department of Licensing doesn't have a system in place uh, to account for that. We have no forms, we have no uh, training, we have absolutely nothing from the state as far as how we are supposed to comply with the changes to the law. Hence, an emergency uh, relief uh, injunction uh, will be sought under, uh, under, the, under those terms if we, uh, if we need to. So there's a lot going on. This was a very, very positive step yesterday. Uh, there is lots more to come. There, there's other provisions that haven't been challenged because of the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the determination of standing. Because no one's been harmed by the law, officially, no one's been prosecuted, no one's been denied, no one's given up their HIPAA rights uh, uh, yet, um, they don't have standing. The judge yesterday actually said that uh, we don't have to be harmed. The const challenging the constitutionality of the law itself, uh, we have standing to do that uh, right now. We don't have to be harmed by it first. We are challenging the constitutionality. We're not challenging necessarily the penalty that's being applied uh, to us as a dealer, as an individual. So uh, this was a very, very good, strong statement out of the court uh, that, that, that leans in our direction. Um, so hopefully we'll get some really good news here to report in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, uh, we are continuing to proceed with the development of the 1639 compliance class uh, that we will have online. Uh, we'll be putting it on our website. It will be free of charge. It will meet all of the requirements of the uh, RCWs uh, passed by 1639. And, uh, and so you will be able to make that service available to everybody in the state of Washington uh, so that you don't have to incur additional fees, taxes, uh, expenses to obtain a, a, a legally obtain a firearm uh, to exercise your Second Amendment rights, whether it's for collecting or for defense or for whatever. You don't need a reason to exercise your rights, and uh, and we don't think you should have to pay extra in order to do that. So we're developing this. Uh, it should be online here in the next few weeks if it needs to go live. If it doesn't need to go live, we won't push it out there until such time that it does. So. Here's to hoping that the uh, the injunction is is issued, and and this uh, the brakes are put on this thing uh, while it's adjudicated through the court process, and uh, now is the time to get active with your legislators. The legislature uh, legislature is uh, is uh, uh, adjourned right now, so uh, all of those folks are back home. They maybe they're on vacation, but they're back into their regular jobs. But this is a great opportunity to, to catch them when they're back in their districts. Go visit them, email them, tell them you disagree uh, with the current push within the state legislature for additional gun control. Not criminal control, but uh, control of law-abiding citizens. Um, write letters to your editor, write letters to your uh, legislators, uh, take your friends out, get them out on the range, show them, uh, introduce new, new shooters to safe uh, recreational shooting sports. Uh, Go out and support your, uh, your local gun shops that are supporting the efforts to defeat this. Um, support uh, gun rights organizations like the Second Amendment Foundation, Gun Owners of America, the NRA, uh, whoever, uh, whoever uh, you want to support. Support those that are fighting for us. Make sure they're actually putting their money where their mouth is and they are in the fight. Uh, the legal fees for this court challenge are being uh, paid for 100% by the Second Amendment Foundation and uh, the NRA. So they're splitting the tab equally. Uh, so we're very lucky to have them here in the fight uh, working with us. Um, not much else to say at this point in time, but we've got very good news. We're very pleased to be able to report that. And uh, get out there, uh, shoot safely, uh, enjoy your Second Amendment rights while you still have them, but please stand up and fight for them. If we all stand up, we have a tremendous voice. 
But if we just sit back and are apathetic and complicit, uh, we're going to continue to have our rights stripped away. So get out there, be active, be safe, enjoy your firearms, and, uh, and spread the good message of, uh, of the Second Amendment and, 